This is 19 Chestnut Street, Part 1. I have been staying in this house for some time now. I grew up here, so I know every nook and cranny of this house. My parents moved out a while ago, leaving me here to take care of the place, I assume. They didn't say anything to me. They just packed their stuff and left. I guess they rented out from time to time, as I've seen many people come and go. Some were cool, some were assholes, but all in all, it hasn't been that bad. I stay in the attic. I turned it into a bedroom a while back. It's a little crumped, but how much space does a guy like me really need? Sometimes when I'm bored, I like to sit up there and reflect on some of the people I've came in contact with during their stay here. Like the businessman, Mr. Reynolds. He was cool, mid-thirties, ladies' man. Kept this place looking sharp for the ladies, of course. He was always talking to some Chinese-looking guy on what he called his laptop. I don't really know what that is. Then one day, he just disappeared. Some people came and took his stuff shortly after that. I wonder what ever happened to him. Anyway, there we were. What I like to call, for lack of better term, the high guys. Two stoner buddies <laughs> that like to sit around all day, drink beer, play video games, and get stoned. Who am I to judge anyone? To each their own. I always say, but they trashed this place. I can't have that. I tried everything I could to get them out of here. But they were so high. Most of the time, they thought I was a hallucination and laughed it off. I stayed in my room the day the cops came to the house to take them away. Who's laughing now? There's been many families move in and out. None of them really stayed too long. Mom and dad's with a couple kids, sometimes just mom and kids, sometimes just dad. Aside from a few screaming matches and the sounds of lovemaking on occasion, we all seemed to pretty well get along. I really enjoyed playing with the kids though. There's so much fun playing hide and seek, duck duck goose, games like that. It made me feel alive. I really miss those kids, but now, now there's Susan. She moved in about six months ago. Susan is amazing. She's single with no kids. Though she does have a cat, Oscar. Oscar doesn't like me. At all. Every time I come in the room, he stands up, curls his back and hisses at me. Like he's ready to attack. I don't want any trouble, so I just leave Oscar alone. Susan goes to work early every morning and doesn't return until late at night, sometimes after dark. I don't know exactly what she does for a living, but I'm sure I will find out eventually. She spends most of her days off just watching Hallmark movies and eating lots of ice cream. I don't understand why, but as pretty as she is, she can do whatever she likes. Susan is about 5 feet 4 inches tall late twenties, maybe early thirties, with beautiful long brown hair, these amazing green eyes, and a voice like an angel. It doesn't hurt that she's chunky in all the right places either. Susan may be the most beautiful woman I have seen in a long time, but her housekeeping skills leave a lot to be desired. It's not that she's a slob or anything, it's just that she doesn't clean up after herself very well, so on occasion, while she's at work, just to help out, I will pick up the cups and dishes from around the house and put them in the sink. Pick up her clothes. I don't know what kind of perfume she uses, but damn, does it smell good. Anyway, I will put her clothes on the hamper, sweep the floor, turn the lights out, things like that. Nothing real major, just the basics. 
It always makes me happy to see the smile on her face when she comes home and sees the house straightened up. She just stands there smiling and she always says, Thank you. Anything for you, Susan. Anything. I am so taken by Susan that sometimes at night, I like to go stand at her bedroom door and just watch her sleep. She looks so peaceful. I would like nothing more than to lay beside her with my arms around her waist and just hold her, maybe someday. I know it's only been a little while, but I think I'm falling in love with her. I want to tell her how I feel. I want to show her. I think I'll do it tonight when she gets home. What's that? Some kind of folder on the table? HPRC Hamilton Paranormal Research Center Case File 137 Paranormal? I've never seen this before. She must have left it behind when she left for work today. I'll just take a peek. Hey, that's a picture of Susan. What does it say underneath? Lead Investigator. Wow, sounds important. Here's a letter. I can barely read the writing. I hereby give my permission to any member of the HPRC to live in my residence for the sole purpose of obtaining evidence of paranormal activity within and assist in removal of said activity. Hmm. I can't read the signature. But there's that word again. There's more. A newspaper clipping from 1974. What does it say? Yesterday, the only son, Michael, age 17, of respected banker William Bernard and his wife Emily, was found dead in an apparent accidental fall from the attic door to the hallway below. The cause of death was a broken neck. The incident occurred in their home, located at 19 Chestnut Street. Wait, Michael Bernard? That's my name. And that's my address. Those are my parents. What? I'm dead? I can't be dead. I can see. I can feel. I can touch. I can remember the fall. I remember getting up. I remember my mom coming up the stairs crying because I fell. Wait. She wasn't looking at me. She was looking at the dead me on the floor. I remember now. The two men in suits coming over and taking my body away. All my relatives coming over a few days later, dressed in black, crying talking about, I was too young to go. Go where? I didn't understand it then. I didn't go anywhere. I understand now. I'm a ghost. That explains everything. Why Mr. Reynolds never answered me when I talked to him. He couldn't see me. He couldn't hear me. Why the stoners thought I was a hallucination, because in their altered state of mind, they could see me, just thought they were imagining it. Why the parents of the children could always ask their kids, Who are you talking to? Then scream at me to leave their kids alone. They couldn't see me either. Why Susan's cat hates me. Why my parents just up and left one day. I thought they left me in the house. Come to think of it, I haven't seen them in years. And why Susan was always smiling when I cleaned up. It was because I did it. She was looking for evidence of my existence. She wants to get rid of me. I don't want to leave. I like it here. This is my house. I'm not leaving without a fight. She wants evidence. I'll give her evidence. I really loved her. I helped her. I even tolerated her damn cat. Well, screw all that. I've been nice so far, but after this, no more Mr. Nice Guy. She should be home soon. I'll wait right here, so when she comes through the door, Game on.